Hi, I'm Professor Steve Rowe. I'm a real paleontologist and you're watching Real Paleontology. And today, for the first time in my Super Predator series, we're going to look at a couple of super predators that aren't extinct. The question I'll be addressing is what really happens when big cats and big bears collide. Now, there's an abundance of rampant speculation out there on this topic. A whole little universe of armchair experts with very strong opinions, some based at least in part in fact, others based in half-truths, and others based entirely on fake news. One thing's for sure, I've yet to see an argument out there in YouTube land that is solidly backed up by reference to the peer-reviewed scientific literature. So let's get into it. The fact is, we already know what really happens when big cats and big bears share the same space. This is because it's happening right now, and scientists have been studying it for decades. And if you want the real story based on real facts as recorded in the peer-reviewed scientific literature and presented by a real scientist with decades of research into big predators under his belt, that's me, then buckle up. I think you're going to enjoy this. We will begin with focus on one of the biggest cats and one of the biggest bear varieties alive today, the Siberian tiger and the Asuri brown bear. I won't be saturating your screen with blood and gore, but I do need to warn you up front that this story is not for the faint-hearted. It's a tale of high drama and deadly violence. Now I repeat, this is going to be a fact-based treatment. I'm going to talk about what has happened and when, not what would happen if. And I'm here to tell you that when it comes to big cats and big bears, there is a ton of BS to sort through. I've spent much of the last four decades researching mammalian carnivores and never have I had to wade through such a deep swamp of fake news, uninformed commentary and utter crap as I've had to in order to get to the facts here. What I thought would be a short project has taken days so a good way to show your appreciation for all my hard work would be to like this little video and subscribe to my little channel. Even more importantly, I will post some links at the end through which you can make donations to help save the tiger and the bear. I'm making ongoing donations to both and I feel better for it. As of the last census in 2023, there are only five and a half thousand wild tigers left in the world and there remains a terrifyingly real possibility that this number could be reduced to zero. Anyway, first up, some basic stats. The Siberian or Amur tiger is now almost entirely confined to the Sakotialin region of the Russian Far East here. In the most recent census, it was estimated that only 337 adults remained in Russia and around seven in bordering regions of northern China. So, unsurprisingly, pretty much the only hard data we have now on interactions between Siberian tigers and brown bears is from this region. The bears within this area are known as Asuri or Amur bears. Regarding the size of the Siberian tiger, historically we've had some way big numbers. According to Bakov 1927, the maximum size of the Siberian tiger was 390 kilograms. However, according to Hepner and Slutsky here, 1992, this figure is probably an exaggeration. On the other hand, in their review of the then available literature, they concluded that weights of up to 360 kilo were well established. But it's important to bear in mind here that all of the records exceeding 300 kilos are provided by early or mid 20th century sources. If ever there were 360 kilo plus Siberian tigers, they are long gone. According to John Goodrich here, who heads up the Panthera Tiger Project, a guy who's been on the ground researching Siberian tigers for over 20 years, the largest individual that they have ever encountered was a 206 kilo male named Dima. We'll talk more about Dima later on. He's a hell of a cat and a very bad news cat for bears. Even less reliable data is available out there for the Asuri brown bear. It is definitely a very big bear. And again, out there on the interweb, 
there are all sorts of wild figures bandied about. But when you drill down into it, very few have much substance. Some argue that it approaches the Kodiak bear in size, with maximums of 600 kilo or more widely touted. All of these numbers, if founded on anything, are based on extrapolations from a single skull reported in 1933, or extrapolations based on eviscerated carcasses as reported by early 20th century hunters. And of course, hunters never exaggerate. Bottom line is, I don't put much credence in any of these. But as with the Siberian tiger, even if there once were 600 kilo brown bears in Far Eastern Russia, they're not there now. According to John Goodrich, the largest big bear dude they've ever come across in the last 20 years was 800 pounds or 363 kilograms in weight. Now for some more specs. Siberian tigers, like all cats, are highly specialized killing machines. Killing is what they were built to do. All other priorities rescinded. Pound for pound, they have far higher bite forces than any bear. For example, in 2007, myself and Per Christiansen published this paper, wherein we predicted bite force in a very wide range of mammalian carnivores. We found that a 177 kilo tiger can exert a bite force at the canine teeth that is around 20% more than that of a 355 kilo polar bear, more than twice its own size. And when it comes to killing things, bite force is very important. Compared to bears, tigers carry far less fat and they have far more fast twitch muscle, which translates into superior strength. And a much greater proportion of their body mass is muscle to begin with. According to Hepner and Sludusi 1992 here, from a sample of two Siberian tigers, they averaged 13.3% fat. There is no specific estimate available for the Asuri brown bear, but according to Rivet et al. 2017 here, in a study of North American brown bears, they found that on average, brown bears comprise around 29% fat, although of course this will vary considerably depending on the season. I have found no reliable data on the percentage of muscle relative to body mass for the Siberian tiger. There are unsubstantiated claims of over 70% around out there, but I don't think these are reliable. However, cats in general are the world's most muscular animals, or muscular mammals. According to Cuffetel 2017 here, muscle accounts for an average 57% of total body weight in African lions. It's a pretty fair bet that tigers would be comparable on this metric. Another relevant metric here is that cats have a very high proportion of fast twitch relative to slow twitch muscle. We don't have the numbers for the tiger specifically, but again, we do have data for lions. According to Conadale 2011 here, up to 80% of the lion's muscle mass comprises fast twitch fibers. This translates into additional explosive power. So as powerful as big cats may appear, they are in fact even more powerful than they look. On the other hand, according to Smerdu et al. 2009, Brown bears max out at around 45% fast twitch muscle, a little more than half that of the big cat. There is a downside, of course, to fast twitch muscle, and that is that it fatigues more quickly. Bottom line is, though, that everything about the big hypercarnivorous felid, from the strength of its bite to the morphology of its elbow joints, right down to the sharp tips of its retractable claws, are optimised for killing. It can leap vertically to reach 16 foot into the air from a standing start and turn on a dime. The big bear, not so much. It's a generalist and most of its diet is plant-based. In terms of lethality, pound for pound, the Siberian tiger comprehensively outmatches the Usuri bear in pretty much every respect. Of course, the biggest males can have one big advantage they can be up to 70% heavier than the biggest male tiger. Now, I should quickly mention here that the Usiri bear is not the only bear in town in the Russian Far East. 
the wide-ranging Asiatic black bear is found pretty much throughout the same territory. These are smaller than the brown bear, but still formidable, reaching up to 200 kilo, although a typical male would be closer to 150. So now let's get into the nitty gritty. What actually happens when these big cats and big bears cross paths? Well, surprisingly to some, I'm sure, according to Sarah Dokin in our 2018 here, reporting evidence collected over a 20 year period, both Yusuri brown bears and Asiatic bears are an important part of the tiger's diet. Overall, bear remains were found in 8.4% of the 743 bear scats analysed. And the authors note that this probably underestimates the significance of bears in the diet of the tiger. Interestingly, the proportion of bear remains was much higher in the non-hibernation period. According to Chichenko 2012 here, which of the two bear species is the preferred prey varies between regions. In the Sakoti Alin Reserve, the Suri brown bear is the prime target. But in the Lozovsky Reserve, black bears are the favoured dish. Now, we should point out that there is no clear evidence I've been able to find of tigers killing adult male Asui bears, although Sarah Dokin et al. do report predation on a three to four year old male, and at this age it would have been very close to maturity, which is typically at four to five years of age. More broadly across all regions, Chichenko 2012 conclude that the proportion of bear in the tiger's diet varies greatly, ranging from around 2% to 31%. In a separate part of their 2018 study, based on direct observation of 18 bear carcasses, wherein the age and sex of the prey could be documented, Siridoka et al. found that in addition to the subadult male mentioned above, tigers killed a further seven Usuri brown bears, six adult females and one bear cub. Another brown bear carcass was clearly scavenged. Of the nine Asiatic black bear carcasses they found, eight had clearly been killed by tigers. Two of these were adult males, one was an adult female, and five were of indeterminate sex, two young and three adults. Sarah Dokin conclude that predation by tigers constitutes a significant constraint on bear populations, not only in the Sekoti Alin Reserve, but in the Russian Far East in general. So it's pretty clear that Siberian tigers kill and eat bears. And depending on the sex of the tiger, the location and the season, they may kill quite a lot. Indeed, some tigers are bear killing specialists. And this brings us to the next question. How the hell do you kill something as formidable as a bear? Well, the favoured means of dispatching bears by tigers appears to be a bone crushing bite to the neck vertebra as opposed to a bite to the throat, at least according to Kaplanov 2010 and Chichenko 2012. Although in one instance reported by Chichenko, a tiger with broken canines simply crushed the skull of an Asiatic black bear with the stubs of its canines, as you can see in this photograph. Incredible, but it gets wilder. In this 2022 post here, the chief scientist of the Panthera Tiger Program, John Goodrich that I mentioned earlier, describes the kill scene following an attack by a large male tiger on a large female Usuri brown bear. The big cat involved was the 206 kilo Dima I mentioned earlier. Goodrich had been tracing the big cat's tracks in the snow when he came upon the following, having reached the top of a steep embankment. And I quote, Before me was a large, partially eaten brown bear sow. I jumped down to examine the carcass and immediately noted a single bloody hole in her neck that was clearly an entry wound. Her tracks showed that she had ambled along the base of the embankment and seemed to suddenly fall down dead, with no sign of the struggle one would expect from a huge tiger killing a bear nearly his own size. I concluded that the bear had been shot and Dima just took advantage of a free meal. But why hadn't the hunter claimed such a valuable prize? Then I turned the bear over to inspect the exit wound. To my surprise, I found two more entry wounds. I revised my conclusion. Dima had leapt from the bank onto the bear, dispatching her with a single bite to the nape of her neck. The power and skill required to do that was unimaginable. As it turned out, 
Dima was a brown bear's nightmare. Goodrich goes on to say, Dima killed more bears in the following years that we tracked him. And not all kills were so clean and efficient as my first discovery. At the sight of his next kill, another female brown bear, I found a gruesome scene with a huge swath of flattened vegetation where the bear fought for its life. Small trees had been bitten in half and those that remained standing were splattered with blood. Gruesome stuff. But I need to point out here that it's not always one-way traffic when it comes to bear-on-tiger conflict. In their long-running survey, Ceridokin et al. 2018 also note that although they never saw evidence of bears killing tigers in the Sakoti Aline Reserve, historically there are at least 12 known instances of Asuri brown bears besting and killing the big cat. Again, big males killing females. Clearly, there's no such thing as chivalry in the Russian Far East. Incidentally, there don't appear to be any examples of Asiatic black bears killing Siberian tigers. Moreover, there are many recorded examples of Asuri brown bears pushing Siberian tigers off their kills, and it appears that some big male brown bears make a habit of it, following female tigers until they make a kill with the express purpose of stealing it. Sometimes it works outright, with the bear pushing the tiger right off the carcass. On other occasions, a very uneasy truce is reached, with both the predator and the scavenger sharing the spoils. Now, what happens when a big male Siberian tiger meets a big male Yusuri bear? Well, the answer is simple. Not much. I've been unable to find any clear evidence of a hot conflict between the big male predator and the big male kleptoparasite anywhere in the scientific literature. I very strongly suspect that this is because, although pound for pound the tiger is clearly a more effective killing machine, at nearly double the big cat's weight, an adult male Usiri brown bear is a hell of a dangerous opponent and simply not worth the risk. And evidently, the big bear feels pretty much the same way about the big cat. If it does happen at all, it must be a very rare event. And until or unless it does happen and is reliably recorded, we simply won't know. And even if it did, you'd need to have a whole lot of incidents before you could say with any confidence who the likely victor would be. Although I'm sure this won't stop the many so-called cat boys and bear boys out there from endlessly debating this question. And I'm going to end this episode here. But tomorrow I'm going to publish another bear cat episode. We're going to look at a study about an incredibly aggressive bear. The bear that kills more people than all the world's tigers combined. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this one, and if you did, like I said, please like and subscribe. But more importantly, please donate to one or more of the very worthy causes on your screen.